this is a customer counter. So basically, someone goes in and someone goes out. You can count if it's if someone's gone in or someone's gone out. Let me show you. So let's say if I go this way. I'm, I, I'm, this is set to default to zero, so I'm, I'm not so sure if this is in or this is out. But uh, one. How this works is that there, this is an LCD screen standing for liquid crystal display and this is an infrared proximity sensor and this can detect the object which is in front of it. So this is called sensor A, a wonderful name I know, this is called sensor B. So when the first one detects something in front of it, it detects it, then when the sensor B detects it again, it means that someone's went in, as you can see. And when, and obviously the other way around, when sensor B detects it first, then sensor A detects it, it means someone, that someone went out. So, yeah, this is the screen and the infrared with the sensors. And if we move to the back, there is a breadboard, which is the thing that connects all the wires if there's not enough space on the Arduino. And the Arduino is the board with all the things, which is the board. So there's something that needs to do all the thinking, right? So the, this is basically the brain of the whole thing. To be more exact, is the CPU, the central processing system that's thinking all, all the stuff. But in general, this is the thing that's doing all the work of processing information and outputting it. So there is the Arduino, there's the breadboard, there's the sensors, A and B, and there's the LCD, the liquid crystal display. And the back, the board is the Arduino Uno. So if you want to do this kind of thing, I'll make a tutorial on like how to do it, but later. Um, but this is the product that I made, and let's test it in a real shop. So now we're in the um, what's it called the supermarket, and this is an entrance. So here it is. This is in. That's out. Let's plug this in. cloud so when someone goes in it sends the information to the IoT cloud which then stores it and when it's time it can just output the result for example we were planning that we have a, um, a voice assistant in our case it's a um, 
Google Home. And when you ask your Google Home how many people, how many people are in where, um, the, the place that this thing is detecting stuff, then it will the information that this um, sent to the cloud will get sent to the Google Home, which will output the answer in words. Let's say five people in Asda in our case. But there are two problems in not doing that. Number one, we have an Arduino Uno, another Arduino Uno, which is connected to Wi-Fi, um, because in, which is connected to Wi-Fi, and that's how we're going to get the IoT. But I accidentally um, was it called connected uh, power, so there's power and ground. You should never get those mixed up. Um, but I did get them mixed up and I put power, so the ground I mean, the ground into power on the breadboard, which connects all of these things together, ground, power, power, ground, ground, power, power, but I put power, power, ground, power, which will basically burn it down. So, this is a demonstration of exactly what I'm talking about. This, if you can see, won't focus, it says 5 volts. That means it's power, which is connected to the red side, the plus, which means it's correct. Power, the red plus is power, to power, to the 5 volts. But then, there is ground following the wire. Boom! It's on power, which means that there's nothing on ground, and that power will be sent to ground, which will absolutely kill this thing. Now that... It's a tutorial, it's a mini tutorial on how to kill your Arduino quickly. Don't, don't do it. I'm, I'm giving you a warning, to don't do it. Learn from my mistakes. So the second problem is, is that Google is used to um, receiving a voice command, a command from your voice, a voice command, and um, sending it out as an action which is like turning on and off a lamp or something. But in this case, he, um, the Google has to receive the command, and then he has to send, like the device, so there's the device, the device has to send the information to the cloud, which stores the information, which in our case is this. Then the Google Assistant, um, you ask it what, um, what to do, let's say in our case, it is how many people are in this place, so then it sends the query, like it sends what you just said, to the cloud, which then uses the device's message, like device's information, to send it right to Google Home. So it's not used to sending from the device to Google Home, which, is, which makes it pretty hard to do. Like for all the switching on and off lamps, there's always software to do it for. But in this case, it doesn't come out of the box. Um, you have to make it yourself with code. So that's a prob that's the second problem. If I didn't break this, but yeah, that's our end plan. But right now is this. I'll update you soon, and I'll see you next time. Bye.